Obviously, as I do, got to believe Just that the somehow looking back into the past can help you. When you think about it, that are actually deeper than politics. Please join me in giving a warm Chattanooga welcome to Dr. Vandanya Shiva. We have a very ancient text in India, and it basically says, everything is something else's food. And that's very different from the pyramid we build where man is at the top. Because when you get into the soil at the end of your life, the microbes are one step higher on the food chain. <laughs> the lie that the world can't be fed on organic must be put aside. And if you think living a life of disability, obesity, diabetes is easy, go ahead and live in McDonald's. A billion people in the world today are deprived of food. And the double tragedy is that half of the billion, 500 million, are growers of food. When we abuse food and we abuse the land and abuse food systems, and allow them to be abused, just for profits, we are abusing ourselves. 70% of the water on the planet is being used for intensive irrigation, for fossil fuel and chemical intensive agriculture. 40% of the climate problem in terms of greenhouse gas emissions is coming from industrialized, globalized agriculture. 75% of the species destruction in the last 25 years has been because of industrial agriculture. So no matter which environmental problem you define, at the heart of it is a bad way of farming. And therefore, I have consciously, as an ecologist, dedicated my time and life to building sustainable food systems because I believe we solve many environmental problems through this. When a company owns seed as a patented property, then seed, saving seed becomes a crime. Exchanging seed becomes a crime. And then the focus on the seed really came from a 1987 meeting where the industry was there and they said it's unfair that farmers save seeds, it must be our property. Uh, so genetic engineering was put in place in order to have patents and all this was achieved through the free trade treaties and that's when I said I got to save seeds. Seeds are not an invention. Putting a toxic gene into a seed is definitely not an invention. It's a crime. It should be punished, not rewarded with a monopoly. I want to at least live till the day I see patents on seed and patents on life withdrawn as a perversion that was put in place in international law and has no place in a universal humanity. If we move from seed as intellectual property to seed as a gift, sharing it freely, growing it out, there's no shortage of seed. Localization of agriculture is the ecological imperative, it is a health imperative, it's a democratic imperative. I think we are at a cusp, we are at a watershed, and we could go two ways. If those who have brutalized the earth, dispossessed people, destroyed our food systems and our health, are able to continue to push the agenda through what we can see is within the coming century, a possible extinction of our species. Humanity has never had to face that situation, that business as usual can only last a few hundred years, not even a hundred years in my view, because the, the externalities that are being generated are so intense. Every fourth Indian today is hungry. Every second child of India today has the category of what is called wasted in nutrition. Too small for their age. And wasted means you'll never ever reach the level of full mental and physical capacity all of your life. When you see your child die of cancer, 
and you see your neighbor's child die of cancer, and you know this is not happening in other communities, just as an ordinary, intelligent person, you start to correlate. And I think in the environmental movement, more has been contributed by ordinary people than all the experts, or all the agencies, or all the regulators sitting in closed offices, not connected to the world. Those are, those are blackberries and these are actually... You have this huge awakening that is starting to converge. An awakening in building alternative food systems. Hi, I'm Laura. An awakening among youth to say we want another world because this world has nothing for us. Organic farming today is not just about growing better food. It's growing better ideas. It's growing a better human community. And for that, education is vital. Any renewal of a city is incomplete if it stops at brick and mortar. You can just have nicer buildings, but if your food economy is part of that junk food poison system that is destroying the earth, the farmers and our health, then you're not really in full renewal. Lots of people know in their hearts kind of what, what's important, but I think speakers like her um, inspire people to take the next step. We need to move from, maybe we could call it not just fossil fuel intensive and chemical intensive, but stupidity intensive agriculture, <laughs> to, to an agriculture system and a food system that is based on respect for the earth, respect of the producers, their love and care for the earth and what they produce, so the more we respect nature and the more intelligent we are in our relationship with her, the more she'll work with us and the more she will give us abundance rather than scarcity. And that's what we are all doing. And I know if we persist, there is no way the insanity and stupidity of industrial agriculture can win over time. Thank you. I felt really encouraged by both her breadth of experience and, um, and her hope. That really stuck with me is when she said, focus on food, take care of your land, take care of your farmers, and, and practice this agriculture, and then people will start buying. I think it's totally doable. And I have huge hope in the human capacity to make leaps in their consciousness and leaps in their way of living. You know, in a dark room, even one lamp sheds light. And in the darkness of industrial agriculture, even one good counterexample gives us hope. Even one seed gives me hope because I can plant it and grow it and multiply it again and again and again.